What might professional mathematicians do when they get really stuck on a problem? Here is a useful principle that has been recommended by many leading mathematicians, including Terence Tao and George Pollya, from which we will see a few useful tips. And as usual, all references and more resources can be found in the description. Now, the idea in this principle is that if you cannot solve the given problem, modify it to a simpler one that you can solve and use that one to solve your original problem. But how can you modify the problem? And even if you do solve the modified one, how do you use it to solve the original one? Let's answer these questions by looking at a few useful ways in which you can modify the problem to help you get unstuck. These modifications are adding a useful hypothesis, taking a smaller dimension, where we will also see a very important tip, proving a weaker statement, proving a stronger statement, and also simpler modifications which are so common they tend to become automatic for professional mathematicians and have probably already been attempted before getting stuck. Still, these are very important, so if you're not already comfortable with these, you want to make sure that you are. Now, let's take a closer look at each one with some examples. So our first one is to add a useful hypothesis. So say you have some problem in real analysis, which includes a closed set, and you're stuck. Well, in real analysis, there are many theorems that apply to compact sets, which in our case is equivalent to saying they are closed and bounded. So since the problem has a closed set and you're stuck, you might want to try adding the hypothesis that it's bounded, so that it is now compact. This opens the door to many previous results, which is a good thing as we know from an earlier video. So let's say that you have successfully solved this modified problem. Now it's time to think how it might connect to the original one. Maybe you can prove that your closed set is actually compact. Or maybe you can claim that it is a union of compacts and you can use this somehow. And so on. The idea here is to simplify the objects that you were given, work with the simpler ones first, and then use them to return to your original object. But be careful to add hypotheses mindfully. A good indication of whether the hypothesis is worth adding is if you find yourself wishing that you had it. Or, as George Pollya recommends in his book on mathematical discovery, use wishful thinking. In our case, we notice that many theorems apply to compact sets, so it seemed useful to add an hypothesis that would allow us to use them. Now, on to our next modification, which is to take a smaller dimension where things are easier to handle. Especially if it enables you to draw an example. Now, if you were able to solve it for the lower dimension, try to generalize your solution to the original one. And here is a very useful tip from Terence Tao. A common mistake is to try to draw a picture in which both the hypotheses and conclusion of the problem hold. Try instead to draw a picture in which the hypotheses hold, but for which the conclusion does not. In other words, a counterexample. You should be expected to fail at this task, but the way in which your picture fails is often very instructive. And one last thing to keep in mind. If you are using examples, always try to take examples that are just complicated enough to capture the essence of the problem, but not more than that. Next, we have another modification that can simplify things, and that is to prove a weaker statement. This happens a lot in real analysis. For example, if you need to prove something about an infinite sum and you're stuck, try proving for a finite one first, where it's simpler to use tools like swapping limits and sums. When you're done, see if you can take the sum to infinity. Just make sure your bound doesn't depend on the number of elements. For more examples on this modification, see the links in the description. Now, if proving a weaker statement can simplify our problem, then maybe also proving a stronger statement. Or, as Pollya wrote in his book on how to solve math problems, the more ambitious plan may have more chances of success. The simplest form of this is possibly in induction problems. For example, if you want to prove that this sum is less than 2, you're better off proving the stronger claim that the sum is not only smaller than 2, it's actually at most 2 minus 1 over n. Try both and you'll see for yourself. Of course, 
There are simpler modifications you should always keep in mind, as they are extremely useful. Such as restating the problem to prove the contrapositive, or to prove by contradiction. Of course, don't forget that your problem may even be a modification of a similar problem, in which case you might be able to use the same method or even the result. So remember, next time you get stuck, try modifying your problem.